Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to our top things to do in Taipei. Taipei is the capital of Taiwan. It is also the largest city here. We've got a really awesome itinerary of things planned for you guys, but we're going to start with this place first, which is Da An Park. There's a whole bunch of storks and random birds behind me, as well as turtles, and we're just in the middle of a public park. I just saw a macaw flying by into a tree. This is awesome. Let's go check all these different animals out now. It's like we've actually become friends now. Because he's flown onto my shoulder. I saved him as he was about the floor and uh, we built a relationship. <laughs> Something that might surprise you about Taipei is the amount of greenery that there is. This park itself, that um, park, is 64 acres. You'll find here a basketball court, these beautiful ponds and a lot of natural wildlife too. If you're wanting to come here to Da'an Park, it's conveniently located about two minutes walk away from an MRT station by the same name. We're really impressed by the wildlife that you can see here and the nature. It's definitely a place that you want to check out when you're here in Taipei. Another one of the top things to do here in Taipei is visit the Sufen Old Town or the Waterfall. We're here at the Waterfall right now. We're just about to go check it out. It takes roughly 30 minutes to one hour by shuttle or MRT to this destination. It's a really pretty waterfall. It's not the tallest in Taiwan, but it is the broadest. It's about 20 meters tall and about 40 meters wide. It's also known as the Little Niagara Falls. You don't really need a long visit here, but definitely do come check it out. In about five minutes from Shufen Waterfall, you'll come over here to Shufen Old Street. You'll see that there's a railway track that runs right through the middle, very similar to the one that used to be in Hanoi and the one that's in Mekong, just outside of Bangkok. The thing that's really popular to do here is write your wishes and that sort of thing on the sky lanterns. It's a big part of Taiwan culture. We've opted not to do it though, just because of environmental reasons where they land, it's um, trash and not so good for the environment. So aside from just the lanterns, what you'll find here is also food stalls, drinks, souvenirs, and it's also a pretty nice scenery too. Sufen used to be a coal mining district back in the old days when it used to be colonized by the Japanese, but these days it's just a tourist attraction where they fly the sky lanterns. We managed to find this tour package through Kluke, who are taking us to Sufern, as well as Jilfen, which is where we're heading over to next. Just arrived at Jilfen, which is another one of the top things to do, and we are super excited. It's really pretty. It's like something out of an anime. What's immediately captivating about this town is its beauty. So all the buildings are scattered along the mountainside and they all face towards the ocean. It's super picturesque. So if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli and Spirited Away in particular, then you will know that Jofen is most famous for its resemblance to Spirited Away. Even though the director, filmmaker, the great Hayao Miyazaki has not ever claimed that this was his inspiration for Spirited Away, it's hard to deny the resemblance. And behind me is the famous Ame Tea House. You can see just how much it does resemble spirited away and so even if it wasn't the inspiration for it it's definitely worth checking out just for how pretty that is you'll notice that these streets are pretty empty right now we've come at a really good time because normally this place would be packed there's also a lot of different paths and alleyways that you can explore which makes this place feel quite magical you can either come to Jofen in the daytime or from late afternoon to nighttime. We've chosen to come from late afternoon to nighttime because of the beautiful lanterns and the sunset. There are a lot of great places to stop and have a rest and have a drink. We are here at the Skylight Tea House where we've got a nice view of Ame Tea House just across the side. But there are many different places that you can get different views around the place here. The name Jofen came from the fact that there used to be nine families that would live here. Jofen means nine portions and so in the past they would used to make orders and they would split up the portions into nine. <laughs> so this place is incredible. It's very, very majestic and pretty. We highly yeah. recommend coming here if you are making a visit to Taipei or Taiwan. When you come to Taiwan and Taipei in particular, one thing that you absolutely have to do is visit a night market. There are so many to choose from. We've come here to Linqiang or also known as Tonghua Night Market. It's a lot more local and so it's much quieter than the other ones such as Shilin or Raohe. Let's go see what goodies we can find. 
aside from good old street food, what you can expect to find in this market are things like toys, clothing, accessories, a bit of jewelry even. It smells so much good stuff here, but there is only one dish that's been calling out my name and that is Lu Rog Fan. It's one of my favorite Taiwanese dishes. It is braised pork on rice. That is incredible. I love this dish. You can taste all those fatty juices seeping into the rice. And there's a lot of rice to the pork ratio, but that's because you don't need like that much compared to it. It's got so much flavor. So good. I'm following my nose right now and I'm smelling some real stinky stuff. All you Asians out there, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's stinky tofu, it gets right up in your nostrils and I think I found my store right behind me over there. Okay, the smell is super strong now right outside the store and it looks like they have a Michelin award too. Stinky tofu is basically regular tofu that's been preserved in milk and all kinds of different meats and then it lets it ferment for a little while. It's then taken out and then deep fried and this is what you get. So let's see how this goes. Seriously, this isn't offensive at all. I can only taste a slight hint of stink. It really smells worse than it tastes. Salty, crispy, a little bit soft on the inside. I mean, if this is all stinky tofu is about, I'm with it. This tastes good. Jiang Night Market is open from 6 p.m. till midnight. Some other night markets do open a bit earlier though, from around about 4 o'clock, and that's usually when they start getting ready. So after all that food, I need something sweet. We found this shop here that's got lots of different um, ball things. <laughs> so we're gonna come in and try some. So what's a ball thing? Like taro balls, taro balls, <laughs> jelly, stuff like that. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> My taro balls. I love squishy desserts like this. It's basically glutinous rice flour. It's a hot soup as well, and we got the osmanthus flavor. Perfect after all that food that we had earlier. It's not that sweet either, so I really like it. One of the most popular tourist attractions here in Taipei is visiting Liberty Square, which is where we're at right now. 240,000 square meters of square goodness and right behind me over there is the Liberty Arches, one of the monuments of freedom and behind me over here are two twin buildings, the National Concert Hall and the National Theatre and most importantly right behind me over there is the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall which we're going to go up to and check out closer in detail. Like many of the attractions on our top things to do in Taipei list, entry to this place is free. The building and the gardens are all really well maintained and they're also color coordinated to the Taiwanese flag, blue, white and red. After you climb all the steps leading up to the Memorial Hall, what you'll find inside is a statue of the former leader, Chiang Kai-shek. And for history buffs, this is a really cool destination. Or if you just like architecture, this is a really awesome place to check out. Definitely one of the things that should be on your top things to do list. And then there's the National Palace Museum. To get here, you can get off at Shilin MRT station, then catch either a free shuttle or a short bus ride to come over here. Ticket prices for the National Palace Museum are 350 NT per person. There are multiple buildings in this complex. This museum attracts 14,000 visitors a day, and there are over 600,000 pieces here spanning over 2,000 years. It's really intricate seeing all the different pieces here, and a lot of them have come from the Forbidden City Palace Museum, which we've been to. We'll leave the link over here in our Beijing episode. So there are two pieces in particular as foodies that I really wanted to see. That's one of them. It's a braised pork made out of jasper stone. So it's not actual real braised pork no matter how real it looks. They've even managed to get the indentations into the skin and the different layers of texture through the meat. It looks mouthwateringly delicious. The second piece, which is unfortunately not here in the museum until the end of May, is the Chinese cabbage. It's also an amazing piece because there's actually a fault lying in the cabbage itself which runs through the white part but they've turned it into the piece itself. It just runs right over here. There are also two bugs in the cabbage. The katelid and the locust that sit up here. Amazing piece and a little bit unfortunate that we won't be able to see that one but it's okay. Still got to see the pork belly. 
There's also a garden right next to the Palace Museum that you can take a stroll through. It's free entry if you hold your same day ticket or it's just a very small coin donation. So if you're interested in history and you like checking out royal artifacts and you've got a couple of hours to spare, the National Palace Museum is definitely a place that you're going to want to check out. On to the next activity. So the final thing that you have to do when you visit Taipei is climb the Shangshan Mountain Trail. It's 500 steps, only takes about 15 minutes and you get one of the most majestic views back at Taipei City. Let's go up and check that out for ourselves. So we've chosen to come around sunset time so that we can try catch a good view. Are you getting tired? No, I'm tripping on the steps. Do I need to redo that? No, it's okay. <laughs> At the cross section you've got two choices. This side is a much longer walk but it's a lot easier and this side it's shorter but it's a lot steeper. So what do these 500 steps equate to? 1.8 kilometers of elevation. You sound out of breath. I am a little. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm in Southeast Asia all over again even though it's only 18 degrees here in Taipei. <laughs> This hoodie and the 500 steps, sweating buckets, but man, this is totally worth it. We're not even at the top yet. We've still got another five minutes to go before we hit the peak, but man, check out that view. It is beautiful. We've made it to the top, and I gotta say that the awesome to effort ratio is definitely on the awesome's favor. We're back over there, that view of Taipei City, right in sunset, perfect. Taipei has definitely been an underrated city for us. We generally have a lot of fun in every single place that we go to, but Man, Jilfin in particular was just standout amazing, as well as just the park as well and meeting that blue macaw. So if you guys have enjoyed this episode, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment as well, we like hearing from you all. Catch you on the next one.